Welcome to Ask Our Experts, where we ask our scientists and engineers your questions. Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm a PhD student. So I work in a lab which works on a technology called mass spectrometry, but this uh, basically just uses a big laser to look at um, all of the different molecules. I'm trying to identify new drugs using this. So this question came from Coalbridge Middle School, their year six class, and they asked, how do our bodies fight diseases? There's lots of different ways that our bodies fight diseases. If you think about our emergency services, so we have the police, we've got firemen, and we've got um, the ambulance service, and each of them uh, respond to different emergencies. Like that, our bodies have different um, methods of actually defending themselves, because if you think about it, they're constantly under attack. All of these things together, so like the bacteria, any viruses or anything else that might want to come in, um, it's seen as like foreign and it's also called a pathogen uh, in science terminology. So what happens is the first level of protection that your body has is actually barriers to stop these things from coming in. So your skin is actually one of um, the massive defences of your body, so that's a physical barrier. So when you actually cut yourself, you're actually uh, breaking one of the barriers. So that's why when you cut yourself, you need to wash it and put a plaster on, because that plaster is actually protecting um, that hole in your barrier and stopping things getting into your skin. So tears are actually the barrier of the eyes, so there's a liquid layer over them and then the tears come out. So the tears actually um, contain enzymes which can break down um, or stop these um, uh, different pathogens from getting in. So they're seen as like chemical barriers. So the nose has hairs inside of it. Um, and they form a physical barrier to stop things from getting in. Your throat has um, cells in it that are called um, ciliated cells and they're called ciliated cells because they have cilia on and cilia are basically massive hairs <laughs> and these hairs actually waft and they'll waft pathogens and they'll move mucus um, so when you have a cold um, what you also have in there are goblet cells which secrete mucus um, and the reason that you think you have a cold and the reason you produce so much mucus is because the body uses the mucus as a defense to actually trap some of these uh, pathogens, the bacteria, the dirt um, together and then it moves it up into your throat and then you actually, most of the time, you swallow it actually back down um, into your stomach because your stomach has stomach acid in it which will actually dissolve it or you might cough it up depending on what stage it's at basically of this whole cycle. So they're the barriers that you have. Then what you also have in your body is you have different parts of your immune system that work together. It mainly consists of two types of white blood cells. The first type are called phagocytes. These uh, live in your bloodstream and they're attracted to and they bind to anything that's a pathogen that's foreign in the blood. And what they actually do is they come around, they'll engulf whatever it is and destroy the pathogen. It's also been likened to like piranhas feeding on the, the, whatever fish you put into there because all of these phagocytes will just like go all the way around it and then will engulf it. And then the second type is lymphocytes. So these pathogens, basically, they have markers on the surface which say cells in your body will have one type of marker which your body will, will recognise and say, hey, that's part of me, that's part of my body, I recognise you. However, um, if it's a bacteria or a virus, um, it won't be recognised by the body. And these markers are actually called antigens. So lymphocytes actually recognise these antigens on the surface of the pathogen and they, they say, wait a minute, you're not part of my body. Um, I don't recognise your marker or your antigen. This can take a few days, uh, which is why, especially when you get a new cold or something, you feel ill for a few days if you haven't had it before, because it's those few days when your body's still trying to recognise these markers that um, whatever the pathogen is, the bacteria or the virus is, that it can actually give you the symptoms. It wants to actually, so that it can reproduce and like uh, colonise your body basically, because <laughs> that's its aim. When these lymphocytes recognise these uh, markers or when they have recognised that they 
don't belong to your body what you can what they actually do is they create the antibodies um which actually fight the infection and then they also produce memory cells and if you happen to get that um particular virus or uh, bacterial infection again they'll be like hey we, we know what you are we know you're not part of our body but we know what you are and we know how to fight you we're gonna start the production of all of these antibodies again and that's why you're said to be immune to something um, I think that led really nicely onto the next question um how do vaccines work vaccines tend to have a dead form or an altered form of whatever the bacteria or the pathogen is and basically because they're a dead or an altered form they will still have these markers that are um that the alive form and the active form would have but what happens is by introducing this dead or altered form into your body your body actually has the chance to recognize those antigens um, or the markers on the surface if you say get the dead form you wouldn't actually get any symptoms but you would get the memory cells produced, the antibodies produced, and then if you got infected with it again, it would get recognised and then um, the antibodies would get produced. This was asked by Abby, who's 11, and she wanted to know how do people get allergic reactions to things? Allergic reactions are also the immune system. What happens with an allergy is that it's a, it recognises one of these markers on the surface of, say, peanuts or eggs or pollen, and it says, hey, you don't belong to me and you're not meant to be here. For in some people, this can trigger reactions, and then these are called the allergens. So this would be what would cause your allergic reaction. So if you're allergic to peanuts, then your body doesn't like peanuts, um, and it seems to recognise them as foreign and decide that they really don't want to be there. So what happens is during this um, reaction, your immune system will release antibodies, and these antibodies are proteins that actually deliver messages to cells and say, stop the nuts, or stop whatever the substance is. Um, and then the cells send out something called histamine. Histamine will cause your blood vessels to expand massively. Other chemicals and these will then trigger all of the allergy symptoms that you've heard about. So each of these antibodies, as I've already mentioned, will only target one type of allergen. One antibody will be like, I don't like nuts. So that's why some people only have a nut allergy. What happens is when you come in contact with any of these allergens, it could be through your skin, it could be through your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your stomach. Um, that's why it causes um, all of your sinuses to clog up, it causes it skin inflammation, it makes it harder to breathe, it can cause stomach problems because the immune system is trying to fight it like it's an invader. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned as much as I did. If you want to see who we've got coming up and if you want to submit your own questions, then please go to go.ncl.ac.uk forward slash ask our experts.